All right, we now welcome on somebody we're really excited to have on today. He's originally from Florida, and he's now currently playing for the Philadelphia Union. It's Nate Harriel. Thanks for joining us today, Nate. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me here. All right, so before we get into the interview, we're going to start off with some quick hitting rapid fire questions, just like really, really quick one or two word answers. Right. You ready? Yeah. All right, what word do you use more now, JIT or John? JIT. Uh, are you a good dancer? Solid. Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. Favorite type of pizza and where do you get it? Pineapple pizza. Um, this little pizza shop near my house. That's that's a rough answer. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> Kodak Black or YNW Melly? Kodak Black. Who is the best right back in the world right now? Juan Mosaka. Just got left out of the England squad. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, can you play any instruments? Uh, no, I can't. What would you have majored in if you went to college? Financing. Who is the your favorite player of all time? Of all time? Messi. Who do you have winning March Madness this year? Oh, Gonzaga. Same. What? Oh, yeah, I got, I got uh, Iowa. What's your go-to Wawa order? Uh, chicken quesadilla. Bacon. Bacon, chicken, quesadilla. That's valid. Uh, and then what is the last one? What is one thing that you miss most about Florida? The warm weather, the beach and the warm weather. Yeah. At least you're down there now. Get it it's now. starting it's to get warm up here, though, because we're yeah. – I'm in PA yeah, as well. still kind of cold. It's still kind of cold. Soon, though. Give it a couple of weeks. It'll be uh, sunny. and you, uh, For me, 60 is, like, perfect, you know? It's like I'm the not. good changing of the seasons. 75 to 80 is solid. Yeah, yeah. I was down in Florida – in december in naples because my friend yeah. lives down there uh and like yeah it was like 75 80 every single day good weather so, amazing to get away from from the crazy snow of, up in pa it's been snowing like every other day it's been pissing me off yeah it's rough hey and it, it rained in pa last night or yesterday it rained like all day if it was a little colder we would have gotten another like foot of snow foot and a half of snow some crazy so, so we missed out Thanks. My, my uh, Florida, like, gee, I'm not good. Like, I don't really know where anywhere is in Florida, but you said you're in Clearwater for preseason. Is that yeah. near the coast or is that more? Sunny? It's actually it's on the coast. It's like Clearwater is like, it's on the water. So, oh, it's, it's in Tampa. Yeah. Which coast? Which it's Tampa. on the, the Gulf Coast? Yeah, the Gulf Coast, yeah, in the middle of the state. Is that near where you were uh, raised? Yeah, I'm actually, I live from the Fizzy train at. I live like 10 minutes from the beach, from the hotel we're at, like 25. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. 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 Did you, did you yeah, play so at that facility like growing home. up? Yeah, literally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah growing up, I played a bunch of fields down here. Like this Joe DiMaggio where he trained at is like, we used to play, we used to train here all the time and stuff. The fields are a lot better now than they were back then. But, sure. um, it's new training back at home, kind of. Uh-huh. Must be really cool. So yeah. what was like? Playing, what was it like growing up in Florida and playing soccer down there? Was there like a big soccer culture where you were raised or was it like a lot of other sports that took priority for people? I mean, like in, down in Florida, like sports are year round here. You can play every single sport year round because the weather isn't affected. But um, soccer started to come, was starting to come up when I was growing up. Uh, I played for the Clearwater Chargers, which is a very like, big club in Clearwater. And there's also TBU, who's also another big club. But um yeah, soccer was soccer is a big sport. A lot of people play soccer down here just for fun, and um you know it's it's a great state for soccer. You know, got a lot of Hispanic the Hispanic culture in the Clearwater area too, which was um which was good. Well, what would you say the biggest sport is down in Florida? Definitely, I mean it varies on like where I'm in Florida. So uh-huh. I say we're South Florida. It's it's weird, but South Florida is a lot of a lot of football. Down in Miami with St. Thomas Aquinas, Miami Central, all those big uh, high schools. And then more uh, like in my area of Florida, it's a lot it's soccer and baseball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I was going to say baseball is like – because everybody goes down there for spring training or like somewhere in that area, so I would imagine. My brother has kids on his team that um fly down from like Georgia and South Carolina in the wintertime to come down and play on some of these Florida teams in the winter because it's year-round. What sport does your brother play? Are you talking baseball or uh, soccer? He plays, he plays baseball. Okay. How, how old is he? Is he older or younger than you? He's younger. He's 15, but he's bigger than me. He's like 6'1", <laughs> 15. 
Does he play soccer at all, or is it always baseball for him? Okay. Always baseball for him. He said it's too much running. <laughs> what about you? So how did you kind of get into soccer over any well, other sport? Growing up, I played every single sport you could think of. Because, like, my dad's a high school football coach. And so, like, I was on the football field from the age of – I could tell I would walk. But um, I kind of got into soccer because my mom just threw me. I was like, you need to get out of the house. So I started soccer at the age of four. And then um, one day they – asked me to come to some like club tryout at my at Clear Chargers. And um I was like, sure, why not? Just for fun. And then it kind of took over with everything. Sticking with Florida. I like I don't really know much about Florida because like I don't like there's not really anybody from Florida up in like Pennsylvania or even out in California really, maybe like one or two, but like what is what is some like popular cuisine in Florida? Like that is there anything Florida's known for? I don't really think there's anything like footers known for. Maybe like a public sub. It's like. Oh, it's Publix? Publix. Publix. Yeah. Publix, I'm thinking a sub from Publix. It's probably the best thing ever. Like, it's compared to like a Wawa hoagie. Yeah. What What's better, Wawa or, or Publix? A public sub. A public sub is way better than Wawa. Yeah. yeah. See, Wawa I go to school in Atlanta and there's, I'm same thing. Like, dude, there's just Publix everywhere. But I don't think I've ever really had a sub from there. I don't really grocery shop down there I've never I haven't lived on my own down there I was in a dorm my first two years and then I'm on I was online this year my junior year so I haven't really had the opportunity to do much grocery shopping I had my, but. I had my mom bring me a public stuff last night actually because I was craving one what's your order uh the ultimate so it's like just every single meat you can think of and black olives lettuce mayo mustard and you toast that thing it's delicious Boston. so you <laughs> played with that the Chargers, right? Was that for your whole youth career up until you went to the Union? Yeah, my whole entire youth career from U8 to halfway of U19. And was that like, how did you end up at the Union? Because that's obviously pretty far away. Where did they see you play? And did you have any other clubs like from the South more interested in you as well? Um, well, I think my club Chargers and um, Philly had like a little thing going on. It couldn't be anything crazy because of Orlando City with the home run and stuff. So they had a little thing going on, and then they saw me at U17 summer playoffs and um, performed well there, and they got called into camp. And then after camp, I got the invite to go up to Philly for, like, a little trial and stuff, thinking it was anything major, just for some training and stuff. And then they called me back eventually. Then they asked my parents if I could come up, asked me. We weighed all the options and stuff. And I found it was the best fit because um, I had Atlanta United kind of interested in me, but not as much as Philly because, like, Philly is really good for young players in development, as you can tell with all the home runs that we have. So um, Philly is probably the best fit for any young kid trying to make it big. Mm -hmm. So did you live with a host family and go to YSC Academy? Yeah, I lived with uh, a host. I had I lived there for two years. Um, I lived. I had twelve kids in the house, so it was a crazy house, but it was so fun. Wow. And then I did go to YSC for to finish up my senior year, which is YSC is incredible. It's fun. You know, there's no no schools like that. There's no environment compared to YSC. How do they have twelve? How big was that house? Twelve kids in there? That's crazy. Yeah, it was. It's just a decent sized house, and like we each have roommates. We have two to a room, and then use the basement as a room. So it's a good sized house, but um, it definitely feels small with twelve people in there. But it's fun. It's so much fun. Is that like a union safe house, or like what's what's like a witness protection house? Like what what's the deal? Who owns the house? Is it just like a random family um, that agrees think, to do I it, think or a random family just rents it out to us? And like all the like the top prospects from like outside the Philly area that they want to bring in, stay in the house. So um, I don't know if you guys know, but like Chris Shakes has at Penn State, he lived there. Uh, Axel Picasso lived there. Uh, one of the other homegrown, Jack McGlenn, he lived there. So it was a house. Was, house was amazing. House was fun. Wait, so is it? Are you guys living there by yourself, or is there like? Uh... Uh, no, we had a we had a we had a house mom and house dad. Cecilia, she's like she's literally my second mother. So she would cook for us, do our laundry, like take us places where we want to go. If we didn't have, if you don't have a car, she'll take you places and stuff. So she's like, she's basically our mother when we're away from home. Uh huh. And then, so coming up to Philly from Florida, was it a hard sell? Like, were they recruiting you pretty heavily? Yeah, they were like, cause like, I was like, I was originally supposed to go to Clemson. Cause like my parents, like, well, my dad really was like focused on getting education and stuff about going to college. And then um, they kept, like, telling me how good things can happen if I just come up here and try it out. So then eventually I pulled the trigger the day before signing day, uh, 
called Clemson saying I'm not coming anymore, which turned out to be maybe the best decision of my life. You know, where I'm at now, you know, it all paid off. So the day before signing day, you called, that's like when you made your decision? Was yeah. it kind of like because the deadline was coming or did that just, was that like a coincidence that it happened around that time? I think it was just a coincidence that it happened at the time because like, yeah, it was just coincidence. It wasn't supposed to be on purpose. Like, I didn't want to wait that long. But um, I, my parents and I, we prayed about it, we talked about it and it, we made the best decision for myself, I think. So you live relatively close to Orlando, right? So were, were Orlando City interested in you? Because it's kind of weird how like the homegrown rights yeah. work because they had to trade your rights to Philly for, I think, a first round pick or something like that. So it's kind of yeah. weird that they get, did they like, first, did they recruit you at all? Like, was that an option for you to go there? I played Atlanta City my whole entire life and they never recruited me at all. See, that's, to me, that's like, that's messed up that they cannot be interested in you and then they still get compensated for your rights yeah, to go to I, Philadelphia. That I doesn't live, make sense. They have a hundred mile radius, I believe. And I live like 98 or 99. Wow. Within it. Yeah. So that's, I, that's I had a problem. It. Yeah. Wait, so how does, what does that work then? How does that work? What does that mean exactly? Everybody from within that radius, the club has the, the quote unquote homegrown rights to them. And if they were to, so for his, in his case, for him to go to Philly, Philly had to trade a first round draft pick in the MLS draft to sign him as a homegrown. Wait, that's so weird. Just because yeah. of where you were, where you live? Yeah, if you live inside the radius of any team, then they own your rights. It's, it's stupid. It's weird. So who owns my rights? Philly. Is it Philly or the Red Bulls? I think, that's, I think that, that, that's weird. Philly, New York, New York City, and Red Bulls is like weird because they all overlap and stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's probably on a county by county basis, I would imagine. I think yeah. you're too old to be a homegrown, Chuck. Well, I, who's, what's, what, who's to say what the cutoff is? True. Is um, there a cutoff? There might not be. I don't think so. I don't think there's a cutoff. Yeah. I don't know if you're listening to this. Don't quit on your dreams, Chuck. I'm, I'm available. I don't, I'm not assigned to any team, so <laughs> – I'm available. Um, so with um, signing your homegrown contract, you did that. That was like right after the signing day, right? Like that was. No, I, I came up. I came up to Philly with no contract whatsoever. I came up like they said, come up here and play with their USL team and like develop and train. And then we'll see what happens. So yeah. Yeah. Up. But but like when it was, uh, it was like in the uh, summer, right? When you sign your homegrown yeah. contract last in summer. July? Last, last summer. summer. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. signed it last summer. Oh, okay. I got the whole entire quarantine thing happened. Oh, okay. 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 I'm so just mixing up the timeline. So yeah. So played- kind of, kind of take us through that then. Like what was, what was that experience like signing the co- whole contract? Oh, it was, it was crazy. Cause like I had a little, like they were talking to me before, like before COVID hit with everything shut down, they were talking about it with me. And then all of a sudden COVID hit and like, everything that got, got put on pause by the MLS and like, cause they weren't allowing any signings during co- like the quarantine period. So it was, it was very stressful, but I knew it was coming cause my, my agent was talking with me about it and stuff, but I knew it was coming. And then when I, when I first signed it, it felt like it was a big relief, you know, like all the hard work of 18 years, 19 years paid off. So um, yeah, it was a great experience signing it being, especially being a homegrown, not from Philly, being a kid from, out of, out of the, the region, the market, and, like, still making it, is a, it, was very, it was very cool. So when you first came – or when you first started playing for the Union, too, you were playing technically as an amateur, right? Like, you weren't getting yeah, paid to play. Player. Oh, you were playing yeah, for no, the uh, was... Bethlehem Steel team, right? That's I think they were still... Union, too. Yeah. No, we were Bethlehem. I played one, one – the first year was Bethlehem. So did you play in – at Lehigh in that Goodman Stadium? We played there one game, like, because we – the year I got there, we switched over to uh, the first-team stadium over in Chester. Mm-hmm. But we played one game at Lehigh against Tampa Bay Rowdies. Because yeah. that's where we're from. We're from Bethlehem. We're from right around there. Yeah, yeah. No, we played one game there, and that that drive was far as hell. That was the far, first drive I ever had to make just to play a game, a home yeah. game. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense for it to be so far away, especially because when you can play in the Union's first-team stadium, which is beautiful. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. I got a my Bethlehem <laughs> Steel scar. <laughs> wow! Why don't you hang that up? Got to wrap it. 
Because the team I used to, well, I mean, well, are from Bethlehem, if you didn't know that. And the team I played for, a club team, was Bethlehem United, and they gave us all those, like the, like in Bethlehem, there's like Arch Quest, and I, they uh, gave all the players yeah. those. So. Yeah, that's the, that's the, the short lived career of Bethlehem Steel. It's like <laughs> three or four years, I think, five years. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Yeah, so I mean, I guess kind of going in that, like, I, that kind of like reminds me of home. And for you, like, are you, do you have anything that you have with you that up in Philly that you kind of reminds you of, your, like, down in Florida? Um, no, not really. Cause, like, I mean, I have in my apartment, I have like this big paint, like this uh, canvas of downtown Tampa on the river and stuff. I have that. But, um, no, I really don't have anything that much from home. You know, like, I see Philly as like my new home in a way, you know, cause like, it, I mean, it is my new home. It's like a home away from home. So you said you live in an apartment now. Do you have a roommate from the team or anything? No, I don't. Actually, well, like, I do and I don't. I have a one room, but my neighbor is Jack McLean, who just moved into the apartment building. So, like, we're over at each other's places most of the time, just chilling and stuff. That's awesome. Is it, yeah. like, with the uh, – there's four homegrowns, right? You, Jack, Paxson, and then one other guy, right? There's, I can't remember. There's me, Jack McLean, Paxson, Brandon Craig, and Quinn Sullivan. So there's five. Okay. So five. Uh, are you guys a close-knit group? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think all the homegrowns are close in that group. And even, like, the older players, like, everyone here is, like, super tight. Everyone knows, like, Philly has young players. So, like, all the, all those seniors, veterans help out the young players a lot. So, like, it's not, like, separated that much. Like, we're all tight. We're all close with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably what is, like, what makes the academy system so good. I mean, having the school there and having, like, the yeah. just the culture. Yeah, for sure. Like, I go into YIC some days still. And just go say hey to everybody and stuff. So it's a it's a really good culture over at YSC and the, just the union in general. Who's the next batch of homegrowns that we should be on the lookout for coming through right now? Um, I have no idea. Like really, I'm not for sure because like all, everyone in the academy is good. Everyone in the union two is good. You know, like union two is now basically U17 kids. So there's a, there's a lot of talent down there. Caden Stafford, uh, Anton. There's just there's just a lot of talent in the whole entire union program. Mm -hmm. yeah so i mean you kind of climbed the ranks for of the union like academy system um yeah. now like with the season coming up do you feel like it's like your time you, you spent some time with the union too do you feel like it's your time to step into the first team and, and start i guess yeah, and get I, mean, I, feel like I, yeah I mean i've i've worked really hard you know my whole entire time my whole entire career and like when i got to the union like even harder but you know it's just what god's will uh, his timing, you know, I can't really force anything. I mean, me and Baizo at right back are the, first, are the two options right now. But, um, you know, we compete every single day. It's um, whoever's in front, uh, we're supporting. You know, it's never never wish anything bad on one or the other. You know, we're there for each other, competing and having a great time. So with Ray Gaddis now retiring, obviously he was the long, long time um, right back. Do you, would you say that it's realistic for you to step in and, and get first team minutes and, and start right off the bat? Is that something that you have your eyes set on or is it kind of like a transition period you feel like? You know, it's, it's a little bit of both, you know, like I think I've been performing well in preseason, but at the same time, I know like this is a very big jump into the MLS, you know, with respect to Baizo, he's played his games in the MLS, right? He's shown well. And even this preseason, he's shown well, you know, it's just all about development. And then when the timing's right, you know, I can't really force anything. When Jim thinks I'm ready, when Iris thinks I'm ready, when Pat thinks I'm ready, it was uh, probably the best the best way to go into it because I don't want to go in, have a bad performance, and then lose all my confidence, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Have you had conversations with Jim and then, like, the coaching staff about kind of from what they've seen of you, what you need to improve on to kind of jump into that role? I haven't really had any, like, direct discussions with them about um, – but I need to jump into the role just about like in general, like the f philosophies with the first team with the high press and you know, bombing forward most of the time, not being scared to go and then join the attack and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, um, tactically, how different is playing for the union two versus the first team? Uh, we fall like, we basically follow the same thing, same format. I think the only difference would be, Union two in the four four two, we played more out of a box style in the midfield. With um, the, with the first team, we played more of a diamond. So that might be the only difference, really. But still, the emphasis of high high press, uh, vertical first is all the same throughout the whole entire academy, basically throughout the whole entire program. 
Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that just makes it easy then to be able to step into the first team because it's like you know the system and what to yeah. what to do pretty much already. Yeah, Definitely. it's it's a very it's a, it's a good transition. You know, we put all of our young players in like good positions to move throughout the ranks from the academy to team two, and then eventually can make it to the first team. Yeah, kind of kind of shifting gears now to your your not youth national team experience. Yeah. You've played 18s, 19s, tw- or you've been called into 18s, 19s, 20s, and, and 23 camps. Yeah. Um, what was kind of like your reaction when you found out that the uh, U20 World Cup was going to be canceled? Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was, I think we were all sad in general because like a few of the guys like we talk about it and stuff, but like, you know, that's another thing. Like we, we sacrificed so much to get there, you know, through all the camps we've been to, all, all of like our sort of careers, sacrificing so much to have it taken away really hurts, you know, because we were looking forward to it because we had, I mean, last January, we were started preparing actually with our two friends against Mexico, had a new head coach, we could have tab, tabs like retirement from the U.S. national team, but like, you know, it sucked, but um, got to keep moving forward, things happen. Yeah, so since then, has there been like any communication with them? Like, is there anything coming up or? Um, I mean, they've taught like they've they've checked in with us about how we're doing and everything, but like it's it's just hard with COVID right now, trying to yeah. move kids in from different states and stuff, and like get from Europe with their rules and stuff. It's just it's very hard trying to get everybody in for camp and stuff. Yeah, are you eligible for any more U twenty stuff, or is it U twenty threes for you for, uh, from now on? Um, I honestly I have no idea. You know, like, I'm just going with the flow. Really, I'm just going with whatever camp they're calling me into. Yeah. When is the cutoff for you, 20s? Because it's probably – you'll turn, what, 20 this year? Yeah, I turn 20 next month. So, um, I think I think that the RU20 age group is really done because, like, I think the next thing we have is maybe – we might be Olympics. I'm not for sure. We might be Olympics, the next one. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. It'll be – you, Did you watch the uh, – it's like the U23 or U24 game yesterday? Yeah, yeah. against Costa Rica. Yeah. It was scary, but, like – they pulled it out until that matters getting result. Yeah. Uh, yeah it, was it, it looked like it was so hot and humid there. Like they yeah, were they, dying. When, like last year before COVID in March when we had like the when I was in with the U twenty threes, we were down in Mexico. And they like just for those four days it was it was it was hot. It was like eighty five degrees, I think, like yesterday in the game. Yeah. Plus it's in Mexico too, which is even hotter. Yeah. And then you're put plus like where where the game was in Guadalajara, you're playing at elevation as well. Yeah, that's another thing to deal with is very like again, like when I was in Mexico with training, not really being used to elevation because I'm kid from Florida and Philly is nothing different. Yeah. yeah. It's it was hard, a hard transition. Is, is it actually like what what would you say? Is it just like the air is like thinner? Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, just thinner. Like, the air is just a lot thinner. Like I'd make a sprint, I'd be like puffing and puffing a little bit more than I usually do. So like once you get but once you get used to it, it's fine. But it's just it's a very hard transition. That's another big deal to factor in with. Plus, it's concaf, which is it's concaf. Physical, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was probably nothing for uh, John Lewis and Sammy Vines. They're used to playing at the elevation in uh, Denver. Kids. Yeah, the Colorado kids. Yeah, I know. I, I'm surprised like more teams don't go. I mean, I don't know. Like, do a lot of teams go to like to places with elevation? Where is that really in the U.S. besides Colorado? That's probably it that I can think of. Yeah, and then you. Yeah, I was in Utah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've never really I've never played at elevation like that. So I don't even know what that what it really feels like. Yeah, I don't think I've either. It's just thinner, it's just it's hard to breathe. It's just hard to breathe. Yeah. They subbed a lot though. I think they used all five subs, which is good. And I'm sure those water breaks helped. I think yeah. they had two water breaks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So so for you as a player, like what what um for you to like, when you're settling into a game, like you start, like what kind of like gives you confidence when you're out there? Is it like completing some passes, um, making a tackle? Like, is there anything? I think, I think my like when I first like when someone challenges you first, like when I first get like a little hit, that's when I'm like, all right, bet it's it's game time, and like I'm gonna make a hard tackle. Like that's when like I'm tuned in. That's when I'm tuned in for sure. Uh huh. Yeah, and then this might be a stupid question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Um, are you fast? Yeah, I'm definitely the fastest on this team. The fastest. Besides Sergio, I think I'm one of the fastest on this team. 
I was going to um, say, because I just peeped, I, I think it was Sergio. I saw, like, his team of the week card or something. He had, like, 95 pace or something crazy like that. He's he's fast. He's strong. He's big. He's weird. It's His build and his speed, it's, like, it's it's weird. Hmm. What's it like Sorry. to be fast? Yeah, I, I can't really. <laughs> it's, <laughs> uh, you get a little, away a little bit more mistakes because you can recover, but yeah, at the same time, like, you don't want to make mistakes to recover. Yeah. It's like like the one I remember. There's one video of Alfonso Davies, and it was like the uh, game that was snowing. I don't remember who they were playing, but he he like ran from like midfield. This guy was like halfway to the ball, and he just ran from midfield and beat him to the ball. I was like, that was that just nice. a gift. Yeah, it's it's, it's really nice. Like you can surprise some people with it. You can you can cheat towards more things too. So yeah. Plus, you don't have people making fun of you for being slow. That's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> you should yeah. hear what some people say to me about that. Bro, yes. oh, you Chuck Chuck is like slow, slow. Like I'm not fast, but I'm not like slow. Chuck is like actually slow, slow. very slow. Yeah. So, some per so people have like told me like person with one leg would run faster than me. <laughs> You're like Tony Cruz's FIFA cards, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like 35 pace or something. Yeah. Speaking of FIFA card, I believe your FIFA card was a 59 overall. Are you happy with that? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's the first FIFA card. I'll just have my pace with seventy eight. Yeah, I think it's a little bit higher. I think I can get if my FIFA card pace just at eighty. But you know, it's nice. Yeah. So. Chuck, he's like what's his name? He's like Goudinho, bro. He's like <laughs> eighty pace. Everybody yeah, wants he was, that eighty pace. He, he was saying because yeah. he's had like a few cards and he was like, oh, they never. They, he's like they always short me on the pace. Like if if I don't get eighty on the because this was before FIFA twenty one came out. He's like if I don't get above 80 on this one i'm gonna have a word with them yeah. and i don't think he got above 80 he did not he did not i'm just and happy faster than march that's my biggest thing when i saw my fifa card he was pissed because my pace was higher than his what's his pace he's pretty quick i mean yeah march's fast he's his pace is 75 i don't know why that's good that's good for a center back yeah usually they give the fullbacks like a higher higher pace so they kind of did you dirty but it's your first one I try to say Paxton was as fast as me too, which is disrespectful. But <laughs> have you played with your card yet? Is it on the game? Yeah, it's on the game, but no, I don't. I I'm horrible at FIFA, so I don't even play. I just bought FIFA just to see my card. Yeah, I feel like you kind of if, if you're you're in a video game, you kind of like kind of have to do that, right? Yeah, you have to. Right when it came, right when I my, my card was there, I bought FIFA right away just to look at it. Yeah, I do the same. Yeah, they got it. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so going forward with the season now, do you have any goals for yourself moving forward or goals for the team? Uh, I mean, just for the team. Like, I have personal goals and team goals. More important than team goals, you know, trying to win another supporter shield and then eventually MLS club and then um, advance as far as we can in Champions League. You know, last year we were successful with the um, with the supporter shield. But um, when it came to playoffs, we didn't perform at our best. So um, definitely getting past the first game in playoffs and advancing to the Eastern Conference Finals and eventually the Finals. And then for myself in general, with uh, goals is to make sure I'm always in the 18. And then um, just competing for the right back start, getting some minutes, get some young minutes, and then um, learning as much as I can this year. Is there um, one, is there like a milestone that you're looking to hit? Like a year from today when you look back, for you to say like, wow, okay, I had a good season. This was a successful season for me. Is there like a milestone that you want to hit? Um, I mean, not I really, don't, not really. I just want to, you know, get minutes underneath my belt and just play as much as I can. As my, my, my if I learn, if I feel like I've learned more this year, developing and develop better, then I hit a milestone. Mm -hmm. All right. So the the union's been media training you, huh? Yeah, I'm always. I mean, I almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, do you feel like – so, like, I mean, the union just had Brendan Aronson and then Mark McKenzie go over to Europe. Do you feel like now, like, you, the union has, like, an expectation that they produce, like, talent for Europe? Like, do you feel like there's, like, a higher expectation of you to perform at a high level? I don't think it's a high expectation. Just showing that, like, you know, Ernst, our great GM has the, has the mindset and, like, has the, a good – plan and pathway for our young Americans to get over to Europe as you can see with Mark and Brendan being sold for that much money so it's just about performing well and then good things happen when you perform well yeah those two answer. just they, those two just funded the academy for like 10 years <laughs> yeah yeah I mean it's starting it's paying off now right 
Yeah, they, they, so it was a risk, but you know, it, it paid off for sure. Yeah, they did it right. Yeah, they did. They did. Cause yeah. I have to say, I I played. I didn't play for the union. I did like union juniors when I was like ten to thirteen or whatever. Yeah. And that was just when the academy was like start. Not not when it was starting, but like when they really started to like invest in it and do it how they're doing it now. Um, so it was like really cool to kind of see it happen. Like I I did it with like Brendan, and then I'm sure a couple other guys you know, but yeah. I think he's the only one from that age in the first team mark was a year older um but yeah it's like mark, really mark cool to see yeah. yeah it's awesome yeah mm-hmm. so i mean you kind of talked about a little earlier you being like you mark giving you a hard time for having a higher pace or who's kind of some guys that you look up into the team i look up to is definitely um i look up to the team as far as it seems joe bendick you know he's like Probably my biggest mentor on the team. Like, on the field, Joe's my biggest mentor. Like, talking about positioning and the back line stuff. He's been a big help. And then off the field, El Senior, he's a clown. <laughs> that man's the – <laughs> I know. Give some good, give, uh, he's giving me some good advice for the, for the world off the soccer field about never getting a girlfriend and so, stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, I look up to Elson and Joe a lot. And then, of course, Ali, because, like, his career has been so successful. So this, is Il Senior just like making people look stupid and training every day? Yeah, every single like I hate going against him one v one because it's just scary. Has he magged you? Yeah. Plenty of times. Yeah, plenty of times. He's made every. <laughs> he shit to me bad the other day actually. So guarding him is like it's not fun, but it's fun at the same time because it's good competition. It's What's, weird because he's built. He's like huge. He's like built he's like crazy. Yeah, he's uh, he, huge, but he's like he's quick big. and like crafty as hell. It makes no sense, like. I don't know. Like, if he gets a first step on you, it's, it's GG. You can forget about it. Chuck, he looks like he's built like guys from the freaking Latin League that we play in on Sundays. It's weird. Sheesh. He's a funny dude. Though. For you, what's more embar- embarrassing on the field? Is it getting magged or missing, like, a wide-open sitter that you just, like, blast over? Not that you would do that, but maybe. Getting magged. Maybe. Getting magged. Yeah. Getting magged. Because, like, especially by, if I got made by a senior, because when he'll do it, and make you look stupid, like <laughs> all some stuff that you've never seen before, and just embarrassing. Yeah. So definitely getting. I don't know. I, I feel like it depends on the, the what position you play, because yeah. Like, yeah, when you're a defender, you don't want to be getting megged though. Yeah, yeah. no. You I mean, you don't want to be getting megged in general, right? Like, um, but as a defender, you get megged and you hear ooh. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the worst. Oh. Yeah. 